what have you been doing for the past several weeks? Well, if you're one that works at Apple, you have been readying a huge update. Welcome everyone, I'm Andrew here from Apple Insider and we're gonna walk through everything that is new so far in the first developer beta of iOS 14.5 and iPadOS 14.5. And honestly, there is a ton of changes. This is the first big new update of 2021 if we don't count iOS 14.4, which didn't have a lot of stuff, but really, there's a lot to talk about in this video, so let's go ahead and just dive into this thing. Starting out with tracking. For Data Privacy Day, Apple was touting that in iOS 14.5, it was going to make it mandatory for developers to ask your permission before tracking your device using its unique identifier. Now that mobile unique identifier is used to serve up personalized ads, track you across the internet and give you personalized ads rather than generic ones. Now this does make more for the developers to serve you personalized ads, but it comes at the cost of your personal privacy. So whether you allow that or not should be your decision. And that is what iOS 14.5 is doing by making it mandatory for developers to ask that. You can access this for a while in iOS 14. Just go into settings, go down to privacy, then tap on tracking. And you have this option to allow apps to request to track. Now with this latest update, it is mandatory. They're gonna to have to ask you that. And if you say, no, do not track me, it's going to block them from accessing your device identifier. Of course, it's created a whole bunch of hoopla. Facebook is getting involved and it's getting quite messy. If you wanna read more about it, check out Apple Insider. But either way, 14.5, that is going to become mandatory. The next big feature is controller support for the latest generation PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers and the updated Xbox Series X controllers. Gamers, you guys are going to love this because I love the PS5 controller and it gets so much better here with this update because not only do we have support for these new controllers inside of iOS and iPadOS and even tvOS, but there's additional customization options. So first we got that share icon in the upper left-hand corner of like the DualSense controller. You can hold that for just a second. It'll take a screenshot, double click it. It's going to start a screen recording, which you can then later share. So it's pretty awesome to be able to quickly do that from within your games. You don't have to go into any menus or control center to do it, just quick access button there direct from the controller. But going into settings and in general, and then there's a new option for game controllers where you can customize everything on a per game basis. So whether you're in Madden or you're in Call of Duty Mobile or you're in SpongeBob, doesn't matter. You can remap, recustomize any of these buttons. That option in settings also allows you to turn off haptics, turn off a screenshot with taking, and turn off uh, screen capture recording as well. So some new accessibility or customization option for these controllers as well as support for the Series X and PS5 DualSense controllers. So here's another big update coming around and oh my gosh, is this long overdue? So you guys, everyone out there I'm sure knows the annoyance of throwing on a mask and then trying to unlock your phone. It's especially especially painful in stores. You're trying to access uh, the wallet app for like your store card or trying to pay with your phone. I know you can do some of that with your Apple Watch, but it's a pain just to unlock your phone in general while wearing a mask. In 14.5, Apple is making it so much better. Now, if you are using a phone with 14.5 and you have an Apple Watch running the latest beta as well, you can unlock your phone while wearing a mask if you have your Apple Watch on. Basically, your Apple Watch has to be on nearby and protected by a passcode, but then if you have a mask on, it'll go ahead and authenticate your phone for you. You even have the option to relock your phone. So it's pretty awesome that you can do this. It's easy to set up right there within settings. Uh, just go down to your settings for your Face ID and passcode, enter in your passcode, and there's a new option there to enable that for your watch. It's kind of like how it works over on your Mac, but now it'll work here for your iPhone. And it's just super useful that you can have your mask on and still be able to authenticate and unlock your phone. This is so, so nice and I'm very happy that Apple added it here in this update. But that is not all. Not only do we have freaking unlocking with masks on, not only do we have controller support for the new consoles as well as new customization options and the privacy blocking, we have a bunch of more. So the other changes, you can now ask Apple's digital assistant, Siri, to call emergency services for you. There is global 5G dual SIM support baked in now. If you use Apple Fitness Plus while you're watching that content, you can now AirPlay it using AirPlay 2. And that means both to an Apple TV with AirPlay 2 
or if you have a TV or set-top box that natively supports AirPlay 2 as well. So you can cast this directly up to any TV or set-top box that supports AirPlay 2, so you don't even need an Apple TV to do this stuff. So it's a really awesome way to get that up there. Uh, inside of the News app, there is now a whole new tab just for Search. Previously, Search was relegated just the following tab. Now it's broken out into its own tab. Um, inside of the Music app, there's a new Made For You section to find some albums or mixes that you are going to like. And if you go to the uh, Apple new or Apple <laughs> Music uh, Radio, there's a new schedule icon there, so you can see the upcoming schedule of content that you can listen to. Uh, if we go to the software update screen, it's got a minor little redesign. It looks a little bit cleaner, fresher, uh, streamlined down from where it was before. The podcast app got an update. It looks a little bit different. You're gonna notice quite a few changes from the previous one to the new version of the podcast app. Apple, of course, putting a lot of importance on podcast recently as Spotify and Amazon are ramping up their podcast efforts. Finally, some developers over 9to5Mac have spotted some new changes coming to Apple Card. These are just present in code at the moment, but it looks like some new features will be coming. There looks like to be a new financial health option coming to the Wallet app, hopefully keeps you uh, in track on your spending, and looks like to be family sharing for Apple Card. So true multi-user support, you can enable it in family sharing and allow other users in your family to have access to Apple Card. So those features are not live yet, but they look like they could be coming in this update or at least one soon after. So that is it guys. That is a ton of updates coming in iOS 14.5, iPadOS 14.5, tvOS 14.5, and even watchOS 7.4, I believe. Yeah, there are a lot of changes here, so let me know, because this isn't even an exhaustive list. If you found more changes, be sure to let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU, and check the linked article down below, which has the latest updates, the latest list of all the new features that we've found so far.